Hi, thanks for coming back. Today I'm going to show uh, Path 4 for Enemy Drone. Let me show you what it looks like. It's the only path right now, so it's kind of a wide elliptical path. It can also turn into a figure 8 motion. So here's another ellipse. Alright, here we go. There's part of a figure 8 motion. And I'll show one more. Okay, that's it. That's what it looks like. So let me show you how I scripted that. In the wave, there's the start function, here's the update function. I did this video a long time ago where I showed how to create enemy drones and all the other ones in waves. It's according to these timers. So I'll just briefly summarize. It's basically going to check to see if the wave time is greater than the next wave for zero. That's the enemy drone. And if it is, it's going to make another wave of them. It's going to determine a path randomly. So path equals mathf.floor of, and then I'm going to do a random number. For this video, I'm just doing between 4 and 4.9, just so that it's always path 4 for testing. Uh, anyway, it picks a random number between these two numbers, takes the floor, or the lowest integer, um, immediately below it, and then I calculate if the, or I, uh, I do a random number again here, if it's going to move in from the left side or from the right side of the screen. Again, I won't spend too much time on that. And then I check to see what path the enemy is on. So for now, we're on case four, and I have four different numbers that are going to generate the path that the wave of drones will go on. So I have A temp, B temp, C temp, and D temp. A is going to determine how wide in the plus and minus x direction this um, set of drones will go on. B and C and D are going to be used for the vertical motion. So I have a note here that says that if the C temp turns out to be 1, I'm going to get elliptical motion. And if it turns out to be 2, I'm going to get a figure 8 motion. What this means is that for every time that my um, set of drones goes back and forth one time, if it goes up and down, a single time, then that's going to be elliptical motion. If it goes up and down twice, by the time it goes left and right for one full path in the horizontal direction, that'll give me a figure eight motion. All right, so I will show you some more. This will make more sense as we go along, especially if you've had trig before. Um, I've added a variable num in group. So I can now have a random number of enemies that show up in a wave together. And right now it's always five, um, just because that's what it's always been, and I want to check out some spacing. So the spacing is important here because if I have more guys, then I have to spread them out farther um, so that they don't all bunch up at the at the endpoints when they go to turn back around. So if you watch the beginning of the video again, then you will see that they don't really touch. That's because I have spaced them out even more um, in these couple equations here. So I have a variable trig step, and I uh, multiply some number here. This is something that I have to balance. So I have it at 0.5 right now, times pi, or mathf.pi, divided by num in group. So this is going to give me an even spacing between all of my um, uh, instantiations of the enemy drone. So now I want to know, well, where's the first one that I want to place? Well, I don't really, like, if you think in degrees, if I put the first one at zero, and then the next one at a positive um, angle, like say it's every 10 degrees, zero, 10, 20, 30, and 40, then um, if I have too many, so going back up here to num and group, if I have too many, 
in a wave, then they, the first one might appear right on the screen instead of coming from off the screen. So this line here shifts back half of the range. So imagine if I'm going to spread these guys out over 90 degrees, if trig step is 90, then what I want to do is say, well, what is half of trig step or half of 90? That's 45 and then the negative. So instead of starting at zero degrees, I'm going to start at negative 45 degrees. And then I would add um, in each uh, trig step, I would go up through zero and then to positive 45 degrees. So if that does not make any sense, don't worry about it. If you've taken trig, hopefully you're following along. All right, so going down to path four now, I'm going to instantiate an enemy, and this is in a for loop. So however many are in num in group, I'm going to instantiate that many. And I'm going to send into inst enemy the trig offset and the path, which will be 4 here. And then I'm going to increment the trig offset by my trig step. So going down to inst enemy, I receive those two variables as start position and path. So going down to case four, because that's the path I just sent in, my trig offset is going to be the start position that I just sent in. And then my X and Y, I'm just going to start them really far away from the camera. That's where uh, it's basically not going to affect any kind of smoothness of the path, but I just don't want it to show up on the camera. So uh, after I receive the trig offset as the um, start position, then I record the position vector, the x and the y. Down here I get position z is 0. Again, you might want to go back to a previous video and check all this stuff out. And then I send in all these variables, including this new one here, enemy trig offset, um, in the... Let's see, let me do this line. So I have a variable other here, which is going to be an alias for enemy drone, which equals clone.get component enemy drone. So everywhere I have other, you can it replaces this code here, clone.get component enemy drone. So I send in all of the variables that way. So let me go and show you what calc position does now. And again I have this A, B, C, and D temp variables here in path four. So remember A is the left and right and then B, C, and D are the for the vertical motion. So the enemy drone receives all these values, and I have this variable here now a lifetime plus equals trig speed times time dot delta time. So that's I have a trig speed instead of just an x speed, which was already in here before. Here's x speed because the trig functions move at different speeds along their path, so I'm going to try to balance out trig speed with x speed. It might be a little tricky, so we'll see how it goes. So in path 4, every time I update the position, I'm now going to just calculate a new x, where I have just an equals here, and compare that to up here with path 1, 2, and 3, where they add or subtract an amount. So here I'm just going to recalculate position x, direction times a, this is how far left and right the ellipse or the figure 8 will go, times the cosine of something in here. So if you know some trig, then this alive time is like t, and add some kind of an offset to it, and plus a half. This half over here is actually being multiplied by a, so it should um, shift it a quarter of the whole orbit. Um, so one quarter will be off the screen, and three quarters of the orbit will be on the screen. And then I calculate immediately after that the, the y position. So calc position dot figure eight, and I send in all the values that I need, which I'll show you right now. A lifetime, B, C, D, enemy trig offset. So let's go over to calc position. I receive all those values. Where is the x? And then these other constants here. So I have B is the amplitude of the sine function, so that's how high and how low in the vertical direction this path is going to go. And I have it multiplied some c here, so this is either the 1 or the 2 
for a elliptical motion or figure eight. And then I just add some D offset. So it either shifts it up or shifts it down. It gives it some randomness and um, some different play, different feel every time you play. So hopefully that made sense. If not, maybe you want to go check out some trig videos or uh, a trig textbook or something. Okay, thanks for watching. On to my next video.